Hello everyone and welcome to the second episode of Around the World in 80 Planes in X-Plane 11. Rather than going around the world in a single aircraft, I've planned a route with 80 legs using 80 different ones, trying to keep the flight time between 1 and 2 hours. Along the way, I'm going to be talking about the plane I'm flying in, in a style similar to my Rocket Profile series. I'm also going to be testing out different visual settings on each flight, in a quest to capture the most beautiful scenes possible, and frame rates may be variable. The scenery is not default to explain, but all freely available, and mostly thanks to Ortho 4 XP. Sorry about the long delay between episodes 1 and 2, I actually had the first 9 flights already recorded before starting the series, but after the first video I got sick and had voice problems briefly, then I got sidetracked for other things. But we continue here with a flight between Detroit Metro Airport to Toronto Pearson International, flying the stock Beechcraft Baron 58. Now the responses to the first video seemed skewed to wanting to see airliners and that made me worried about the reception that the Baron 58 would get, but it is a nifty dual piston engine plane. The Baron was first introduced in 1960 as the Baron 55, which had a length of 8.53 meters and a much longer wingspan of 11.53 meters, carrying one pilot and five passengers. Gradually, the body was lengthened to 9.09 .09 meters with the Baron 58 in 1969, while the wingspan stayed the same, and the extra space added comfort and baggage space. It also got a bit heavier, going from 1,431 kilograms empty to 1,814. To compensate for this, the engine used was changed from the Continental IO-470L, which had 265 horsepower, to the Continental IO-520s or 550s, which have 300 horsepower. The number in the engine designation indicates its engine displacement in cubic inches, so the IO-470L had a 470 cubic inch displacement, or about 7.7 .7 liters, while the new engines boasted 8.5 and 9 liters. The Baron 55's engines were related to the engines on the Cessna 180 and 182, mainly different in adding fuel injection instead of carburetors. That's designated by the I in the engine model name. The Baron 58's Continental 520 is shared by the Beechcraft Bonanza, Cessna 210, and other Cessnas, while the 550's have also been used in the Bonanza as well as the Cirrus SR22, both of which we may see later in the series. With these engines, the original Baron 58 could cruise at 200 knots, but its cabin was not pressurized. A pressurized addition, the Baron 58P, was introduced in 1976 alongside a turbocharged addition, the Baron 58TC, which got TIO 520s, which provided 325 horsepower. These special versions were produced until the mid 1980s, but the regular Baron 58 continued to be produced until 2004, at which point Beechcraft shifted to the Garmin G1000 glass cockpit avionics with the current Baron G58. A new G58 costs around a million dollars, but Barons have historically retained their value reasonably well. I saw a 1973 Baron 55 selling for $205,000, and a 1988 Baron 58, over 30 years old now, selling for $415,000. Hopefully you could talk that price down a bit though. The original Baron 58 has a maximum range of 1,013 nautical miles, which is 1,165 statute miles, and carries 1,164 pounds of fuel, which is nearly 140 US gallons. So doing the simplified math, you can get 8.3 miles to the gallon. With that full fuel load though, you can only carry 136 kilograms of payload, so maybe not even a passenger, depending on how much you and the potential passenger weigh. Fill the cabin and that fuel economy and range is going to go down dramatically, as is the way of things. According to a different article in Flying Magazine, the G58 can go 800 nautical miles at max cruise, 1,500 nautical miles on economy cruise, with a fuel capacity of 194 gallons, though you can only carry about 60 gallons with 6 passengers. The difference between the fuel capacity numbers should suggest that while there aren't many different models of the Baron 58, and the airframe sure looks the same, there have been incremental changes and tweaks over time. Over its 50 year history, the Baron 58's main competition in the realm of dual piston engine planes has been the Piper PA-34 Seneca, which has the same capabilities in terms of passengers, range, and speed. More than 6,000 Barons have been built, and more than 5,000 Senecas. The Seneca was introduced two years later, in 1971, 
and a substantially lighter at an empty mass of 1,457 kilograms, basically the same as the original Baron 55. So the seating might be a bit cramped in it, but that lets it get by with two Continental TSIO 360 turbocharged engines, each delivering only 220 horsepower. With their long history of production and refinement, will the two planes be superseded by a new piston engine design? Will the price of very light jets ultimately be tempting enough to steer people who can afford a million or two to them instead? Or will the Baron 58, the Piper Seneca, or both, go on to celebrate a hundred years in production? On that thought, we are passing by the CN Tower in Toronto in preparation for landing at Toronto Pearson International. This flight was actually recorded on December 29th, 2018, so it's been a little while and I've flown quite a few flights since. And the total distance was 186 nautical miles, so fairly short flight for the Baron 58, which can fly for 5 hours. This took 1.4 hours. And here we are on approach, flying over a highway there. And as we come in for a landing, I'll say thank you for joining me in this flight between Detroit and Toronto in the Beechcraft Baron 58.